the Almighty. When you have faith in Him, that's what you're saying. I trust and believe Him. I am persuaded by what is being said, what He has said, that He is able to accomplish what He has spoken over me and over my life. Or over me as a person from this book. Faith is not necessarily a belief that he exists. So there's sometimes there's this confusion that because I go to church or a synagogue or wherever I go to, to worship him. Because I believe that he exists, that is faith, that's belief. When in reality, you're not just meant to believe that he exists, you're meant to believe him. So when he's speaking about you, when you have words in this book, which comes from his very voice, faith is not just believing that he exists, it's to believe what he has said. So there is believing, and then there is believing him. So faith is to be persuaded. When he's spoken, I'm, I'm persuaded. I'm confident. I trust. I believe. Now, Genesis 15, verse 1. Genesis 15, verse 1. It reads, After these things, the word of Jehovah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and my steward of my house, this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold, behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. He that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord. And he accounted, account, counted it to him for righteousness. So throughout the, 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 the book of Genesis, we see that the Almighty is promising Jehovah that he will be, out of him will come a mighty nation. From his seed, all nations of the world shall be blessed. But Abraham is an old man without any children. He's an old man without any children. So at this point, the Almighty is saying, I am going to be your shield. I am going to be your exceeding great reward. And Abraham, who is already a wealthy man, is saying to Jehovah, what can you give me? Seeing as I go without a child, I'm seedless, I don't have any children. This servant is going to be the heir. What can you give me? He's a wealthy man. Then, you, then the Almighty reveals to him, again, this promise, telling him to look into the sky. That's how innumerable his seed will be. And Abraham believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. He literally believed. Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And the word believed is Amen. To stand firm, to trust, to be certain, to believe in. So faith is the root of belief. That's why, again, that is why when you're praying and these words are being spoken that you agree with, that's why you say, Amen. 
So Abraham's literal belief in Jehovah, which was accounted to him for righteousness, is the root word faith, which is the foundation of the faith that we must contend for. At this point, Abraham was childless. He was an old man. He had no children. But he said when he heard those words, he believed, he amen, he, he heard it, he received it, and he, he, those words will be established. Those words will come true. I have faith in what you have said, even though my physical reality, I can't see my children, I don't have any children, but I believe. He was fully persuaded, he was fully confident in the words of Jehovah, and as a result, it was accounted to him as righteousness. Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. By faith, he was called out to a place which he was meant to receive for an inheritance. He obeyed and he went out, not knowing where he, whether he went. So this Abraham was called out by the Almighty to go to this place which he's meant to inherit and he obeyed. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which have foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So the root of faith of Abraham's, the root of Abraham's um, righteousness is his belief, is his, him believing in his faith. But what we also see is that Abraham, to get to be at the place of believing, he had to obey. Before he was accounted as righteous in the word, he had to leave his father's house and go to this place which he would eventually inherit. Abraham's faith was towards God. He put his trust, confidence in Jehovah, in his word, and as a result, he was compelled to obey. Now, if you read Hebrews 11, verse 17, again, Abraham's faith was towards God and as a result all his confidence and trust was in Jehovah he was therefore compelled to believe and obey Hebrews 11 it read, by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac so he's with Abraham at the point in Genesis 15 he has no children no child, no seed. Okay. But by faith, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. Now we know the story. That's the faith of the man, and it, it, it gives you more information here. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So he, Abraham is given the word that your seed will be through Isaac. I'm going to fulfill the promise that I gave to you through your child Isaac. Then he's given the word. I want you to go and offer up this Isaac. And by faith, Abraham went about to fulfill the instruction. 
accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he had received him in a figure. So Abraham's faith is, is, is some, on a, the next level. Abraham in his mind, the writer of Hebrews is saying that Abraham in his mind is saying, the Almighty has said, my, I will receive the promise. My seed will be as numerable as the stars. That's coming through Isaac. So when the Almighty is telling me to offer up Isaac, he must therefore be able to raise this child who I'm about to sacrifice from the dead. That has to be the plan, otherwise he would not be asking me to offer him up. That's Abraham's thinking, and as a result he obeys. He hears and obeys. The foundation of our faith is to have confidence, trust, to be certain, to stand firm, not only believing in God, but also believing in God and his word, like Abraham. Ephesians 2.8 For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So now, what we see is that faith is actually a salvation issue. Just like repentance, just like contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, faith towards God is a salvation issue. That's what we see right there. And then it goes on, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is why we read that we should repent from dead works. Because the works which you might be doing, which are the, the, the teachings, the doctrines, the traditions of men, are not getting you anywhere closer to the kingdom. They're sending you the other way. Because it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Now the hypocrisy... And sometimes the perversion is that, that you have is that if you are obedient to the word, that you're trying to work your way into the kingdom. Which is completely inaccurate. For by grace you are saved through faith. So you're, you're, you're not trying, if you keep the commands and statutes and judgments of Jehovah, Whilst you believe in Yeshua and are walking by the Spirit, fulfilling the righteousness of the law, you're not trying to work your way into the kingdom at all. You're just doing exactly what is written and what you're told to do. That's obedience. Now the people who are trying to work their way into the kingdom are those who are adding to and taking away from the word, which it tells you not to. So that's just an interesting dialogue that you know I'm having in, in my own mind here. Faith towards God is a salvation issue. Having confidence, trust, steadfastness, belief in God, who He is and in what He has said He will do, is what causes you to move into the area of righteousness like Abraham. You can't just, you can't just talk about faith, 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 because I believe I'm righteous, I'm a child of Abraham, I'm, I'm righteous, I believe. But you're actually living in complete disobedience. That's not how it works, because when we see the life of Abraham, who is the father of faith, he was obedient to Jehovah. The fruit of believing Jehovah is obedience. That's the fruit of belief, obedience. Because if you believe him, who he is, and his word, then you will obey. If you believe Jehovah, you will obey him. Because he has expressed his desire to bless, to prosper you, to liberate you, to give you salvation. 
to his people through his word. There is no other reason, there's no reason if you, why, if you believe in him, you believe him, that you will disobey him. Because his word is clear, if you are obedient to him, he will bless, he will prosper, he will preserve, he will, he will save his people. And we see this uh, part of this in Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commands, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And that chapter, or the next few verses, continues on all of the blessings. If you will hearken diligently. So the fruit of faith is obedience. If you are obedient, all these blessings shall come upon you. Because he wants to bless and prosper his children. Just like in the flesh, you know, if you've got children... If you're a king, you've got children, you want to set your children up. You give them land, you give them territory, you give them possession, you give them jewels, you give them riches. Our Father in heaven, you know, it's the same way. We are children of the Most High. He wants to give, bless you according, according to His riches and glory. So the fruit of believing Jehovah is obedience. Because if you believe Him, who He is and his word, then you will obey. Because he has expressed a desire to bless, prosper, heal, deliver his people in his word, if they obey him. The fruit of unbelief is disobedience. Not believing in, his, in him and his word. So unlike Abraham, who literally believed, and was compelled to obey. An unbeliever is not compelled to obey. Putting no trust, no value in the word which was spoken by Jehovah. That's the unbeliever. There's no compunction to believe. But there's no drive for them to be obedient. They're unbelievers. Hebrews 3.15 while it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom he was grieved forty years, was it not them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So he's swearing that those who believe not are not entering into his rest because they provoked him, because they sinned. So we, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They were not allowed, they were freed from bondage, captivity, in Egypt, they were delivered, only to be not allowed in to the land because of unbelief. They provoked the Almighty. They murmured against Moses, against Aaron. So the Almighty swore that they will not enter into his rest. The children of Israel sinned, they believed not. The good news that was preached to them was not mixed with faith. They provoked Jehovah with their murmuring and unbelief, and they all died except two in the wilderness. And um, we see that in Numbers 14. Now what, what, what we see in Numbers 14 is these people are brought 
right to the edge of the land of promise. And the Almighty is simply saying to them, go in and take it. It's yours. I have given it to you. I've told you my angel will go before you. This is your land going to possess it. Now the spies have come back and said that are in agreement that the land is a good land. It is a bountiful land. Look at all of this stuff we've brought back. However, there are giants in the land. You know, we can't we can't go up and possess it. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jeff Uni. -ni, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Now these people are murmuring, they're turning the congregation of Israel against Moses, against Aaron. They're afraid, they don't want to go up. Joshua and Caleb read their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defence is parted from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So these two individuals which were spies, they were ready. They were ready to go in and possess the land, whilst everybody else were murmuring, were fearful, did not believe. All of this time, from the time that Moses entered into Egypt, from that point did not believe that the Almighty was able to give that land to them. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. So these people are exercising and speaking and, and exercising their faith, but the congregation is talking about stoning them. Because they've believed what the Almighty has said that they will do. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. So now Jehovah is getting involved. These two individuals are about to get stoned, but Jehovah is getting involved now. So even though the ch children of Israel believed in God, in Jehovah, they did not believe him. They knew that he existed. Why? How did they know? Because manna was falling, manna, manna was on the floor every day. They were, they were given quails, they were given water in the wilderness. You know, the, the, the sea parted. They, they, they saw many signs and wonders in Egypt. They believed Jehovah, but did not believe him when he said, you go in and possess that land. They put no confidence, trust in him and what he has spoken. In verse 11, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere uh, they believe me? For all the signs which I have sh showed among them, and then we, it, in the, we're jumping to twenty-one, but in those in those um, subsequent verses, we see Moses and Aaron again trying to intervene on the people's behalf, reminding the Almighty of the covenant He had. Made with Abraham. <clears throat> and this is what the Almighty is saying in verse 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, Surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit, 
and have followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whither, where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. So there you have, there you have, you have Joshua and Caleb, the two that were ready, the two that were committed to going to the land and possess it. They are allowed in. Everybody else is is not. So to this, to this day, there are people who believe in Jehovah, in God, without actually believing Him. Putting little to no value in His word that He has spoken. Going to the, going to the point as to actually saying that everything which the Almighty has spoken up until this page between Matthew and Malachi, I reject. I don't need to receive and, and believe in anything before this page, um, before Matthew. This is a form of, of idolatry. When people are putting so much faith, confidence, and trust in a system of belief, in, in the creation of man's hands, in a doctrine that they actually put in the word of the Almighty. So these, this form of idolatry and unbelief manifests itself when people put more faith in the works of their own hands, in their traditions, in their denominations, in their doctors, in their, in, in their belief systems than what they actually do in Jehovah. So people tend to believe what they see, what they hear, in the institution, in the group think, rather than what is written. In the same way, in the, in the very same way, the children of Israel would have seen those giants, would have seen that, those people and thought, we can't, in our own strength, we can't do this. First John, chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commands. commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. So, you can be a follower of Jesus. You can go to church. You can go to the synagogue. But what the word is saying is that if you do not keep the commandments, his commandments, then you don't know him. Yeshua tells the people, you know, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? Didn't I do mighty works? Didn't I prophesy? Didn't I cast that devils? Didn't I, you know, go on these missions in the name of Jesus? But he's saying, you know, I, I don't know you. I never knew you. You that work lawlessness, iniquity, anomia. So again, faith in God, faith towards God, which is a salvation issue, the fruit of the faith is obedience. If you want to get to know him, then it's critical that you obey that which is written. Because the fruit of faith is obedience, if you do not obey him, then you do not know him. Because if you knew him, you would trust, believe and have faith in him and what he has said. Faith towards God and obedience to his word is synonymous. You can't have one without the other. 
Faith and obedience leads to salvation, to deliverance.